Okay, so let's talk about the symptom here called dirty condenser coil airflow problems. So let's write condenser on there just to make sure we know that that's what we're talking about. We're going to identify some things you need to know when you're troubleshooting in the field. What are your pressures, your subcoin and superheat doing, your amps and your delta T doing? All right, so first of all, we have a, you see this purple here? We have a dirty condenser coil. Now, what's that going to do to your capacity to cool? It'll, it'll lower it. By lowering your capacity to cool, you'll have a longer run time to try to cool a house if it does it at all. And that's costing you money and electricity. Okay, so guess what? If it's 95 degrees and this condenser is condensing at 125, that'll, rem like it's supposed to, it'll remove the heat and put it outside and it'll condense. But if it's blocked, the energy's staying in the system and picking up more and coming back. So automatically, you're going to have what? Higher head pressure. Your high side pressure is going to go up. Now, I say high side pressure. It's also called, um, they call it in the field, head pressure, high side pressure, discharge pressure, high side. Well, I just call it head pressure so you can understand what I'm talking about. So the head pressure and the low side pressure, whenever the head pressure goes up, in this condition, the low side pressure also increases. So you'll have head pressure up, low pressure up. I had a student say, oh, I wanna see your notes. I wanna see what you actually have written down because that's what I want. Well, I'm writing it on the board for you. You take this stuff out in the field with you. <clears throat> now, 95 degrees over what? A condensing temperature of 125. So we remove in heat. However, if it's blocked from removing heat, it's the hot gas is not going to condense into a liquid like it's supposed to because the gas condenses into a liquid when you remove the heat. But if you can't remove the heat, you have less subcooling. So you, when you have a dirty coil airflow problems over your condenser, you'll have high pressures and lower subcooling, decreased subcooling. Your liquid line will be hotter. When they get a real dirty car, it might be hot to the touch. Ow! So that might be hot. Now, of course, you can have more heat entering your evaporator coil. So your coil's gonna boil off faster and have increased superheat. When the head pressure goes up, the compressor's working harder, higher amps. That makes sense to you? I want you to be able to see this and to feel like this. When you're working on a unit and you have the gauges in your hands, I want you to be able to see what's happening in that evaporator coil in the attic. I want you to be able to feel what's going on in that condensing unit using these principles here. This should be inside of you so you understand what's going on in this system. It'll take time. That's why they call it experience, right? Now, we know last, what is our delta T going to do? If I check between the air going in the return where the filter is and the air coming out of the supply duct, my delta T is going to what? Increase or decrease? Well, let's look at that. If we have less cooling with our evaporator, we'll have warmer air coming out. So we know our normal delta T between 75 into the evaporator and 55 out is a 20 degree delta T. But if this goes up and now you got 65 degree air coming out, you've decreased your delta T. So the delta T goes down. So that right there is how to, you can be troubleshooting to know that you have airflow problems or problems with a dirty condenser coil, okay? And your password, I mean your code word for this video for your lesson is Mr. Rogers.
Do y'all have any questions about this? Text me or call me or let me know.